Hi everyone, it's Monique at Butterbee Scraps. I'm just doing this video because I've had um, some emails regarding the wheels on the vintage chuck wagon. These guys here. And uh, people are asking me for a few tips and tricks as to how I did those. Um, so I, th I thought I'd put together this video. So my dimensions in the pattern are based on you using a chipboard that is 0.02 inches thick. So if your chipboard is a little bit thicker or thinner, it's gonna the wheels aren't gonna work very well for you. So I am actually going to show you some ideas of how you can figure out what dimensions you may need if you're using a different size chipboard. The other problem with chipboard is sometimes it's not perfectly even and I did find when I was doing my wheels that sometimes the um, the dimensions, I couldn't use the same dimensions for every wheel. So anyway, the first thing I did, I'm going to start with the outside part of the wheel. This part here. Okay. So the first thing I did was I cut my strips of chipboard as per the pattern and I don't know if you can see that very well but I ran a pencil line right down the center marked where my holes had to be and I punched all my holes and there's my pencil line as to where I line up this edge of the chipboard so because this is the out outer part of the wheel I want these pencil lines hidden so I'm gonna wrap it so that the pencil is on the outside which means what I want to do to this edge of the chipboard is I want to actually just quickly sand it at a little bit of an angle so that there's it kind of blends in. Sorry, I'm a little off camera here. I'm using my tripod in a really awkward way. So anyway, sorry guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use glossy accents I find is the best. And don't worry if, if the if the chipboard bends at all the holes, that's all going to even out in the end. So I put a little bit of glue on the end there. Pull this over with the pencil lines on the outside. And I line the end of the chipboard up with that pencil line, okay? Like that. And because I'm right-handed, I'm just going to turn this around. And all I do is I keep adding glossy accents between the holes, gluing that down, trying to make sure that the edges of the chipboard line up. And you know what? You're going to get glossy accents that comes out the sides. Totally okay. When you ink the sides, it'll give it a mottled look, which, in my opinion, is kind of cool and more vintage looking. Okay, so you're done the first strip. And it doesn't take long for that glossy accents to, to take hold. See how weird and awkward this wheel is looking? Don't worry about that. So now I take my next strip of chipboard. And sorry, I'm all over the place in the frame, guys. I'm not very good at watching what I'm doing and watching the uh, what I'm filming at the same time, so... So I just take that, line it up, butt it right up to the end of that first strip, and I just keep, sorry, gluing and wrapping. And I just do a little bit of time, and my hands are absolutely covered with glue when I'm done this. <laughs> As you will see, keep gluing and wrapping, and you keep doing that. And as you'll find, as you wrap more strips around the outside, the rounder this wheel will look. Um, I'll just finish this one strip. I don't want to bore you guys with, you know, it's kind of like watching paint dry. Let's watch Monique's glue dry. And I'm being kind of sloppy here. I would normally take a little bit more time, a little bit more care to make sure this glossy accents gets to the edge of the chipboard strip.
Okay, so you can see already that by just wrapping one strip, my wheel is a lot rounder, and you can kind of play with it and make it round. Okay, so all you do is you just keep gluing and, and wrapping those strips along the outside until you get to the uh, number specified in the pattern, and when you get to the last strip, you sand the end at an angle as well. It just kind of helps. I didn't do a very good job here, but if you look at the picture in the pattern, it, it just really helps blend those edges in so it's not as as obvious. Okay, now for the hub or the center part of the wheel, and by the hub, I mean this part here. Okay, the outside is the easy part. Dimensions will be spot on every time your spoke, the holes for your spokes are going to be evenly spaced regardless of the thickness of chipboard you, you use. This is the tough part, the hub. Of course, because you build it from the inside out. So I start with a piece of dowel for your axle. You can see I already have one on there. And the first thing I do is, well, I don't think I said this in the pattern, but you know what? Sand the end of this first strip. Because again, it'll help blend it. I just add a bit of glossy accents to the end there. And I glue this on the edge and I just kind of hold it in place for a little bit. Sorry, my camera's not very good at focusing close up like that. Just hold it until it's secure. And then what I do is I just glue and wrap and you know what pull just kinda as you wrap it try to wrap it tightly because that's another thing that affects the dimensions on the outside of this hub is how tightly you wrap this so try to you know Give some good tension on that when you wrap. So I'm just going to pause the video here for a second, and I'll wrap the uh, correct number of strips on until uh, until I get to the, the last one that's required. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, as you can see, I've now wrapped the uh, number of strips on this axle prescribed in the pattern. I've got my last strip, which is a bit shorter. I've marked my pencil line, punched my holes, and I've also sanded the end with, at the holes at an angle so it blends in to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack this last piece in place using just a small dab of glossy accents. So make sure the pencil line is toward the it's face down, and you butt that end out the holes up to the end of your last strip. That's already glued in place. And then what I do from here, once I know that's stuck, is I just dry wrap it. Because what I'm doing here is I'm just checking to make sure those holes are going to end up in the right location. And for me, that is close enough. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, the last two holes are a little bit closer together than the rest, but that's okay. Now, if you notice that your holes are too far apart, and like I said, this may happen if your chipboard is not quite the same thickness, if you don't wrap it quite that tight, use the use a little bit too much glossy accents, whatever. They might be too far apart, which means your strip is too short. So what you can do is just cut a, a strip that's a little bit longer and, and dry wrap it. Now if your holes are overlapping, the strip is too long. And what you need to do is take it off the end here, trim a little piece off, and shorten it up. This, the wheels, particularly the hubs, require some patience, so don't be afraid to get dirty, be patient, and have fun. 
Um, but before I sign off, I want to talk to you a little bit about the spokes. Once your, your outer wheel is made, now I didn't finish mine, it's not going to be perfectly round. But because of that, you may have to adjust the lengths of your spokes a little bit. And I do talk about that in the pattern, you know, cut a few a little bit longer. Um, gluing the spokes in place takes some, some patience as well, but you know what, totally doable. I know you're all totally capable. So, like I said before, get dirty, have fun, happy scrapping. Talk to you later. I hope this helps. If you have any more questions, please, please, please email me. The email is on my blog at www.butterbeescraps.com. Uh, there's a tab there where you can get my email address and contact me. So if you're having any issues with any of my patterns, please don't be afraid to call me. Thanks. Bye-bye.